In the 20th century, the United States government conducted thousands of secret experiments in which the effects of radiation were studied on sick, poor, or helpless people. People were fed radioactive food, schoolchildren had isotope sticks put up their noses, radioactive chemicals were sprayed in the air, and pregnant women were injected with radioactive substances to see how the baby would be affected. Most of the experiments were conducted by the U.S. Atomic Energy Commission. They were classified until 1986, when the House of Representatives released the report American Nuclear Guinea Pigs, Three Decades of Radiation Experiments on U.S. Citizens. The report contained information about experiments that were outrageous in their level of inhumanity. Experiments on people with radioactive iodine In 1949, as part of Operation Green Run, the U.S. Atomic Energy Commission sprayed iodine-131 and xenon-133 isotopes into the air in Washington state. A radioactive cloud covered the Hanford complex and three small towns. In 1953, the Atomic Energy Commission at the University of Iowa conducted experiments in which radioactive iodine was injected into pregnant women to see how it penetrated the fetus through the placenta. In another experiment, 25 newborns were injected with iodine-131 to study how it accumulates in the thyroid gland. That same year, the Atomic Energy Commission funded an experiment in which 65 children were injected with iodine-131 at Harper University Hospital in Detroit. From 1955 to 1960, in Northern California, at a specialty hospital in Sonoma, children with infantile cerebral palsy were injected with radioactive iodine into their spines, a puncture into the spinal canal. The brain of every child who died at Sonoma Hospital was extracted and studied. The parents were not made aware of this. Experiments with Uranium between 1946 and 1947, experimenters at the University of Rochester injected 6 to 70 micrograms of uranium-234 and uranium-235 into seven people to see how much uranium could pass through the kidneys before they began to fail. From 1953 to 1957 at Massachusetts General Hospital, Dr. William Sweet injected 11 terminally ill patients with uranium in order to study its use as chemotherapy for treating patients with brain cancer. One patient was misdiagnosed as not having brain cancer. Experiments with Plutonium From 1945 to 1947, the Manhattan Project injected 18 people with plutonium. In 1945, Albert Stevens, who had been wrongly diagnosed with stomach cancer, was treated at the San Francisco Medical Center, during which Dr. Joseph Hamilton gave him injections of plutonium-238 and plutonium-239. No one told him that Albert was being injected with the drug used to make atomic bombs. Dr. Hamilton was involved in the Manhattan Project and worked closely with the U.S. Atomic Energy Commission. In fact, Albert Stevens never had cancer, his stomach tumor was benign and he lived another 20 years after surgery to remove it. Dr. Hamilton's injections made Albert the man who received the highest dose of radiation in history, 64 Sievert. Neither Albert nor his relatives were made aware of the details of the treatment prescribed by Dr. Hamilton. When Albert died in 1975, after his cremation, his ashes were deceived and secretly removed from his family by employees of the Argonne Laboratory, a national research center of the U.S. Department of Energy. In 1946, six employees of the Chicago Metallurgical Laboratory were given to drink water contaminated with plutonium-239. The researchers were interested in the question of how plutonium was absorbed in the digestive tract. Experiments with other radioactive materials Immediately after World War II, an experiment began at Vanderbilt University in which 829 pregnant Tennessee women were given vitamin drinks ostensibly to keep the fetus healthy. The drinks contained radioactive iron, the experimenters wanted to see how quickly the radioisotope could penetrate the placenta. At least three babies born died of leukemia and other cancers. The women began to have health problems, their teeth and hair fell out, they became anemic, and some developed cancer. From 1946 to 1953, at the Walter Fernand Special School for the Mentally Retarded in Massachusetts, 73 children were fed oatmeal porridge containing radioactive calcium isotopes in order to study the substance. 
From 1946 to 1956, 73 children at the Walter Fernand Special School for the Mentally Retarded in Massachusetts were fed oatmeal containing radioactive calcium isotopes in order to study how nutrients are absorbed. The children were not told anything about the radioisotopes, the school staff only explained that they were now supposedly members of a science club. In the 1950s, experimenters at the Medical College of Virginia, under the auspices of the military and the U.S. Atomic Energy Commission, injected burn victims with radioactive substances. Most of the subjects were poor African Americans. Some of them were injected with 500 microcuries of radioactive phosphorus-32, 50 times the maximum allowable radiation dose for a healthy person. From 1948 to 1954, under the supervision of the federal government, researchers at the Johns Hopkins Clinic in Baltimore injected 582 schoolchildren with radium sticks into their noses to treat adenoids. A similar treatment was given to 7,000 soldiers and sailors of the U.S. Army during World War II. Nasal irradiation with radium sticks even became part of clinical practice for a time, about half a million Americans underwent it. In 1961 and 1962, blood samples were taken from inmates at Central Utah State Prison, mixed with radioactive substances, and injected back into a vein. From 1961 to 1965, MIT, under the auspices of the Atomic Energy Commission, conducted experiments in which radioactive thorium-234 and radium-224 were injected into volunteers who wished to participate in the aging research project. In all, over 30 years of experiments, the U.S. government exposed some 20,000 citizens, prisoners, children, pregnant women, hospital patients, military personnel, and the mentally challenged to radiation. In one of her interviews, former U.S. Secretary of Energy, 1993 to 1997, Hazel O'Leary said this about the radioactive experiments and those who conducted them who were these people and why did it happen. I can only think of Nazi Germany. Subscribe to the channel and share this video with your friends. Give it a thumbs up. Tell us interesting facts you know about the topic of this video. See you in new videos.